Oh, hey everybody, cool. welcome to Geek Storm Game Table. I am Sean Hilton, owner of Comics Cube, founder of the Kokomo Con. You can locate a plethora of fine stores in the 100 West Sycamore block of downtown Kokomo. We call it Geek Street. You should stop on down and accompany us on a journey of fun and interesting things. Today I'm joined by my good friend, Kaylee Pemberton. She is uh, she is trying to shame me with her her wiles and ways, and I shall not uh, I shall not fall for it this time. Normally, my wiles are pretty effective, but uh, Sean has some superhuman resistance. No, 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 no. Now, your husband, on the other hand, he he could break my will. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, all right, so that's really off to a weird uh, track. So on today's episode, getting back on it, we are going uh, to be discussing whether all age games should be the only thing at your local convention, and we'll discuss a little bit of the new D&D 1, very little, because I don't think either of us have had a really good chance to really get into that, and uh, our last subject was, we had another one. Letting one. characters die, letting, letting player characters, characters die. die. Not Which, players. That's different. Which one would you like to uh, start with? Throw out your topic of choice. You know, let's talk about letting players die. Or characters. I feel as if I'm under her spell. I must go along. Um, okay, so, uh, whacking a character. Yes. Yeah. Now, I have, again, uh, in, in context of what we're doing, I have been playing since the 8th grade, and I have just turned 50. Mike, when were we in the 8th grade? I'll let the producers come up with a date. It was a while ago. You are a little newer, so I think... In the context of this, we are getting the Grognard, and I don't want to call you a noob, because I find that that's a little bit harsh, I, I'm but offended. I'm you would be... I mean, I'm new, yeah. The rookie. Yeah, the rookie. Oh, I, I like that. Can we that. say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so old, old out-to-pasture GM, new up-and-coming GM, two different points of view. Mm -hmm. Let's hit this. Dead characters, should you whack a character at the table? And I believe the reason we bring this up was it just happened on a popular... YouTube channel where a bunch of people got whacked, and I guess fans were having breakdowns and, or very upset. And apparently upset. the game master was getting death threats or something along those lines because people are so upset about that. That's um, that's that's a lot. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I think wow. you should allow characters to die. I personally don't think you should go out of your way to make it happen unless maybe you have a, a problem player, but it's it could happen. You know, in my games, um, we've always known that it's a possibility. Any Anything I've led, it's a possibility. Your character could die, and that's okay. I hope I don't get death threats. I know I'm as popular as Matt Mercer, but... Happy to assist you. What are how, how many characters have you whacked? You, would, I mean, guessing. I mean, I don't expect you to have an exact tally sheet or tattoos upon your body. Oh, I do. But uh, <laughs> no. Um, in games that I've played in, no one has actually died during a session. I did say goodbye to a character, and essentially, she she died um, because there were a lot of problems happening. Um, so we we did say goodbye to her, and I introduced a new character. Um, that was that was difficult. Other than that, I haven't really like you know games I've led. We've had moments where players are you know pulling up D and D Beyond and pr preparing that next character right in the moment because they are so close to death. And now okay. we have a character that is probably essentially dead. So um, okay. that's a you know complicated answer. I find this incredibly interesting and unique from the two different perspectives that we just made fun of you being younger and me being older. However, some of the words that you just used and the language that you just used um, is so very different. Mm. I grew up with uh, first edition red box set where your guy was Bob the first and you might end up with Bob the Fifth. Mm. Um, you know, you had a 10-foot pole because the GM was very much out to get you kind of mm. back in those mm -hmm. time periods. Um, it's okay. obviously changed, but the word that you used that I found so interesting is you said, I had to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. See, now I can tell you, I've whacked some people, I've put them in the dirt, I have done some horrible, horrible things to people. Now, as I have grown older and out of eighth grade, went through puberty and kissed a girl for the first time and other life-changing events that uh, 
were uh, grand and glorious, my gaming has evolved as I have as a human being. And now um, I'll still whack a guy and put him in the dirt, but I will think about how that will affect my game yeah. and the mechanics behind it, the uh, feeling behind it, and how it's going to affect the, um, I mean, every little thing, mm -hmm. the nuances mm -hmm. that that occurs with. But yeah, my one, if you're sending somebody a death threat about an online game, it's not a popular thing to say, but I'll say it. You're sad and pathetic. Get over your life. Get on with it. Take up knitting. Take up gardening. Take up uh, whittle a boat out of uh, some bark or something. Get a new hobby is what I'm saying. Because mm -hmm. if you're that ingrained. If that you're, you're sending death threats. Yeah. Absolutely. That's completely cross the line. I mean, but. oh, and, and especially because I'm going to guess, and this is year 2022, these aren't ironic, kind of funny ways <laughs> I hope you of, die. you know, well, just, I mean, there's a way to say something in a sarcastic, dark yeah. tone yeah. that could be construed as funny. Yeah. I live in that world. I say mean things. When people aren't, when that camera is not on, what you, me, and Mike say to each other in a private message is no hold bars because I feel comfortable enough mm -hmm. to do that. I have to then think about my table. How long have I played with these people? Are they strangers? Did we just meet up at like an amazing event at the Howard County Public Library where I've met a bunch of strangers for the first time in the digital den, put together a group and we're playing for the first time for the night? I'm going to treat that game differently mm -hmm. than if I'm running for you and Mike, and Todd and Amber who are working in the back, who I've run and played games with now for over a year. We go out, we do things together socially. We are now friends outside of this. So what I'm willing to do to you guys is far worse than what I would do to a stranger. Absolutely, yeah. You know, <laughs> folding, <laughs> folding, bending, spindling, and uh, you know, destroying a uh, friend, that's different. Yeah, yeah. I I say goodbye, right? That term because it is like I like when I crafted the character that I said goodbye to, I put a lot of thought and a lot of time into making her, but then even into playing her and she became kind of real to me. And that might sound silly if you've never played a character that you've really connected with, but but I connected with her. And so to say goodbye to her, it was kind of something I had to mourn. And I know my character or my players that I play with at the table feel, you know, varying degrees of the same thing. Um, we just had a situation where one of my players has to make a temporary character. And he's upset because he, he really likes his character that he plays for the most part. And even though he knows he's going to get him back, not having him for a few sessions that's that's tough on him hmm. yeah but he, they also are all very aware that they could say goodbye permanently at any time say goodbye yeah just kind of whack the guy once in a while okay yeah so i mean and the thing is again i think that's a different uh, a different take on it we uh you know because i've grown up desensitized i suppose to it whereas some of the newer players mm -hmm the game has gotten softer. And now I understand that on a lot of things that's that's a talking point and that is a red flag or whatever word we want to use, but that's the fact. The mm. game back in the day was a death fest. Mm -hmm. you, you got XP by uh, collecting gold, which you got from killing things. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get XP for great role playing. That wasn't in the game. Sure. You didn't get XP for all these other things. You literally got gold. You got XP for every piece of gold you took. Mm -hmm. And none of those monsters were just like, here, have all our gold, sir. So yes, uh, it was a violent, vicious game, but mm -hmm. it was also super easy to make a new character. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an hour and a half. Yeah. It was like 10 minutes, bam, bam, bam. And here's Bob the Ape yeah. and you're on, on the road. It didn't have the, that's not, and be very clear, not every game is the same. Mm -hmm. Some of those games, I'm sure GMs, did have a level of depth and nuance that others didn't. But I believe that that box set right out as it came out, as it was played, it was pretty brutal. But now it takes an hour and a half or longer or days. It takes a session zero. I can tell you the session zero was a couple of buddies getting together for a Mountain Dew to go, hey, um, we're gonna play D&D, &D, right? Yeah, all right, you gonna play the Rogue? Yeah, Fighter, okay, I'll take the Cleric. 
All right, good. Show up to the next game. Not, I'm gonna have this power to boost your power to do this. You'll have this feat, and then make like a, a massive online RPG yeah. clan. That didn't exist. That well, didn't exist. I, you know, I kind of disagree that it takes that long currently because D&D Beyond makes it so easy. My players can crank out a new character in five well, What minutes. about the Amish D&D players, Kaylee? Well, what I about them? I'm sorry. I, I, that was not inclusive of me. I apologize. Gatekeeping again. I'm, I know. I apologize. Knock it off. If you're using D&D Beyond, it can be very quick and simple. It can be. But I think the point is not just that that takes a long time. People are putting backstories mm -hmm, together mm -hmm. that are novelettes at this point. Yeah. You know, back again when we were doing Bob the Eighth, Bob the Eighth was a farmer that didn't want to be a farmer anymore. That's his backstory. Yeah. You know, he, the family had a sword and an old set of armor. He's now the fighter. That's yeah. it. That was it. Yeah. You were out to play for that. You could have the game going in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I think, you know, people want depth. Mm -hmm. They want, uh, they want to have a deeper experience. They want a story. They yeah. if they want to interact with a story. I wanted to kill the monster and take his stuff, and now people want to know why the monster has that stuff. So when I think who hurt Sean, uh -huh. I'm just gonna think uh -huh. Red Box Edition. Red That's Box who edition. hurt Sean. It, it opened the world to me. Mm -hmm. So it Show moved. Me where the Red Box hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> give me the movable rod, and I'll I'll give you some tips. So, all right, I, I think that uh, the generations are a little different uh, on how they come to these yeah. things. But again, the game that I run now is a much more nuanced style game. That said, I'm still gonna whack a character. Yeah. And it's not me going out of my way. It's, it's a typical thing. Like you just had a deck of many things situation oh occur. Oh my God. But I've had the same thing. What my- Don't do that. <laughs> if you want, a deck of many things is a great way to end a campaign. That's what it's there for. Don't do it. Don't um, do it. But what my favorite tactic as a GM is I give you two choices and they're both bad. It's not railroading. You you have the option to do whatever these choices are. You can save little Timmy. And when you save little Timmy, that meant the town flooded and 100 people died. You can stop the town from flooding, but little Timmy is going to die a horrible and gruesome death. Which do you do? Yeah. And then they're going to take... I've had several times where I've had the NPCs beat up a player to the point where they can now coup de gras your character. They've got... You're holding you up by your hair, knife to your throat. Everybody drop your weapons or I kill them. I attack. You missed. I've whacked your character. Now... Yeah. I look at the player and I go, this is very, very clear here. I didn't whack your character. Jim over there whacked your character. I gave everybody the thing. You knew what the situation was. Yeah. You're at negative one. I've got a knife to the throat. I said what was going to happen. I told you I was clear about it. I had that happen into a session. 45 minutes later, the same NPC had got away, does the exact same thing. Gets another character down and goes, all right, hopefully we've run. And said out loud, hopefully we've run from the last time. You know, everybody drop your weapons so we can discuss this, or I attack, he missed, you're dead. You killed two characters in one thing because you can't make a good decision. That's impressive. So, That's impressive. And I'm just like, all right. So I think that there is a time and a place to kill a character, but the thing to think about, and we've had a chance to discuss this, is what does that do to the dynamic of your game? Is yeah. that death worth the... Uh, the cause and effect that is now going to come into your game. Because mm -hmm. the sad part is, is if Margot gets killed, and don't forget to be checking out uh, Geek Storm on Geek Street, uh, a live video, and here's a thing to it, link over, <laughs> over here in the corner. No, it's over there. I it's see over it. there. Yeah. It's just flying around the screen now. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> click on that, and it'll take you to our live games uh, me and Kaylee play together and our uh, halflings. Yeah. And uh, But if she plays a character, she has a very distinct role in the group. It's a four-person group. It's a mm -hmm. tight group. Mm -hmm. If your character dies, that leaves a very definitive hole. Right. And how do you refill that? Right. Well, and we talked a little bit earlier about often when you do whack a character or say goodbye to them, um, <laughs> you end up creating something almost the exact opposite of what you were originally playing because you want it to be something new and not, you know, just a repeat of what you had before. Um, and that's hard when it comes to the dynamic of the group. Because, yeah, you, you are leaving a hole. So if you're, if you're creating the exact opposite, you know, how is that going to work 
when you're fighting the yeah. big bad or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. in my circumstance in this game, I'm playing the cleric. My guy, my guy gets whacked, mm -hmm. and he gets involved in some situations that I cannot blame the GM for when this character gets whacked. He's put himself in there. I know mm -hmm. the dangers of it, and yet I still walk out in front and start talking to some horrendous bad guy. Yeah. Like, hey, whoa, whoa, let's, uh, so, let's say you whack that guy, but I'm the only one that died that session. Mm -hmm. well, what am I going to make? Well, we don't have a cleric, so I'm going to be, I won't say forced, but you're going to probably make another cleric. Mm -hmm. So I just lost one cleric. I'm just making another cleric. And then on top of it, as you said, like, am I going to play that same personality? No. So now I have to do the opposite personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the opposite personality of this character would be, I think, detrimental to this group. So I'm going to be in a pickle if th that were to happen. Mm -hmm. um, now, would I freak out about it? Would I send death threats? No. Would I be bummed? Yes. If the players are like, "Hey, after this game, man, let's go, uh, you know, let's go out to eat and, you know, and, you know, have a have a little Irish wake for dear departed Gavin and Margot." I'm like, "All right, that'd be cool." But after that, it's done. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not. We're not. We can, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So moving on with that. Exactly. So, at the end of the day, it is a game. Like, it's a game. Yeah. If you're so caught up in the game that you feel a need to send a death threat. Stop playing this that game. That is a problem, yeah. So seek the therapy that you need, yeah. figure it out, and move on with life. All right, so uh, 18 plus. Yes, I think you and I are on the same page here. I don't think we're going to be arguing. I think it's just going to be a little discussion. Yeah. But throw it out there and... I, okay, a few things. I don't want to play with we gotta, children. we got to tell them what we're talking oh, about. Oh, we're though. talking we're, about yeah. should conventions make it so that all games that you're going to go and sit down and play are open to all ages or should they still like a lot of them do carry age restrictions for certain games right and am i summing that up you were yeah but todd was sneaking around oh. behind us doing a scooby oh. walks kind of thing though yeah. so it was kind of funny i know and people can't pay attention to me oh. when todd's oh. in the background <laughs> yeah i hope margo never dies <laughs> um I think age restrictions are great. I agree with them. You should have tables that are all ages, and that should be an option, but you shouldn't say every single game has to be all ages. Like, you could invite, you know, your 10-year-old to come and sit down at this table. I, I, don't, I don't like that. So... This came up in, in some form, and we don't know the exact yeah, context. Yeah. So this is how we're going to state it. I did a quick informal poll on my little Facebook page and got like eight responses, and all the people said no. They mm -hmm. should not be forced to do whatever. Um, so I run at Origins, and I've run at Gen Con, and I've run at Gen Con for over a decade now. I've run up to 32 hours of games during one convention. Um, I run a lot of games. I write the games. I run the games, I help other GMs. I'm involved with a lot of aspects on this side of the table for players. And in that time, I have run and created specific scenarios for all ages, children appropriate. As long as you're old enough to be able to hold your own dice and add two six-siders together, you're old enough to play this game. So I've done a game for as young as six-year-olds. Um, usually with that young, we have a mom or a dad with them, and they'll help, mm -hmm. but we've done that. I have run games for, I know the first time player was 60 plus, for his first time he'd ever had a tabletop RPG experience, and I've run for him. So I've run the gamut. Um, I am not a babysitter. Uh, I tell you what this game is. If it's a Call of Cthulhu game, and unless I have done a specific all ages element, maybe we're playing the Scooby Dick gang, maybe we're doing a Johnny Quest adventure, maybe we have written this Cthulhu adventure to be an age appropriate adventure. But the vast majority of times for me, a Cthulhu game is gonna be PG-13 plus, um, somewhere in that era. And to be forced to run, to be told by a group that I have to run this, this is what just happened. I'm not running for your group anymore. I have no problems running a kid's game. If but, you've planned for that and chosen to do that. Yes, but to say that we all have to run kid-friendly material all the time, I'm sorry, it's 9 o'clock at night. I want to run a game at 9 p.m. where the players can literally show up with a rum and coke, 
or some whiskey, whatever. Nobody needs to get drunk and belligerent at the table. No. But if everybody's happy, a yeah. little, you know, whatever, I'm absolutely fine with that as long as we all know going into it that this is about to be uh, the haunted brothel whorehouse of Texas, mm -hmm. and that's the adventure we're now playing. Mm -hmm. As long as everybody's down with it, and I've written up, it's 18 plus, this is the theme, this is the kind of thing that's going to happen in the little description you know going into it. So... No, yeah, I and now I think in this particular forum it was D and D specific. So D and D for me can go all over the place. Mm. What age groups do you prefer to? Uh, personally, I I want to play with you know people who are adults. Um, I, that can vary from I think anywhere like early twenties to I mean you guys are like a hundred so together. Yeah. Um, right now it's 99, but it's about to be 100. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, as long as you are mature enough to come and enjoy the experience and still have fun and be goofy and silly, but at the end of the day, like, still recognize that you're playing with other people. It's not about you. It's, you know, it, you are trying to move the story along. I don't know that teens necessarily would get that i've never played with a teen i have no interest in playing in with a teen like that just does not that doesn't interest me so if i'm paying a lot of money to go to a convention and i want to go and find a game personally i don't want to sit down with kids at that table sure so you know adults of any age i would be fine with as long as they come to it with you know a relatively mature um Mindset. Sure. I've played with plenty of adults that have shown up that I would rather have played with a kid at some point. Yeah. I've had some horrible adults yeah. uh, show up to games. Um, so, you know, the gamut of humanity, it runs wide. Absolutely. But, yes, I, uh, if, yeah, if you're going to force me to run something, then I'm not going to show up to your convention. I paid to be there. Whether it's a GM and I got a free badge, that hotel's probably not free. That gas money's not free. All those meals I'm going to eat are probably not free. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a chance maybe you're getting comped by a company. I've had that uh, luxury, and it's great to be sponsored and have somebody, you know, here's five days of a free hotel, a per diem, and a free badge. And you have to run all ages the whole time. I, I was not. I was told I had to run this yeah. th their game because they were sponsoring it. And I chose at one point to run in all ages, but nobody ever mm. gave me anything. Um, you know, I've, I've got, my credentials are solid as a GM. Um, I don't have that problem. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't have that problem, so. Now again, we don't know the full context of, of their what version. spurred this conversation sure. in the first place, but it seems like we're not alone in thinking. I don't think so. I think what happens is you get this, here's the mentality here is I think without knowing every little nuance in the background was some about a 14 year older, mm -hmm. which that's just an odd age. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not a kid anymore necessarily. Uh, you're not a young child anymore, right, but right. you're not mature enough yeah. necessarily. You shouldn't be in a bar. You shouldn't be going to rated R movies probably. You know, these are things. But the thing is, is I'm under the impression that the parental unit was upset that the child couldn't get into the games because they had sold out. And the mm -hmm. only thing left were some 18 plus games. Tough luck. I go to Gen Con and Origins, and guess what? All the best games for all of us are sold out immediately. You're going to have a harder time getting into a good game of COC than you are to find a hotel within a block of Gen Con, which is also impossible. This doesn't have anything to do with your age. It has to do with the fact that we, as an inner circle, know who the good GMs are by name. We've probably contacted them before their stuff's even gone up to go, hey, Bruce, when are you going to run your game? I'm going to run my game at 9 o'clock on Saturday. I'm going to be sitting on a keyboard ready to go for those games. I have had players contact me. Hey, how many people are in your group? Can I pay you to list it as five people and make it a six-player game? And I will buy that six seat from you. Yeah. Um, so that happens. And so to say... You know, my kid can't get in, and it's because of this. It's not an age thing. It's a convention yeah. reality. I believe that I should never have to stay further than one block away from the convention when it's in Indianapolis. <laughs> That's what I believe. The reality is, is your ass might be out at the motel by the, by the airport, mm -hmm. and you're lucky to get it sometimes. They don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been going to Gen Con since it was in Wisconsin, and I was a much younger person. 
and you know, all blah 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 blah. Old dude, Gen Con. Turns out they don't look at him and go, oh man, he's been he's while he is old, he got fat and he's been with us forever, he gets to get uh, you know closer. It's not how it works. So yeah. if you're upset that you didn't get into a game, guess what? We're all upset. That we didn't get into the best game yep. or the fun game or the game we wanted. They all sell out. Unless you're my friend and you contact me and then I hook you up under the table. But whatever. If you're a really good friend, you contact me and you say, hey, what are you doing Wednesday night? I'm going to buy you dinner if you'll run for me and my friends. And then I show up and I run for you and your friends and you get a private game. Um, so, you know, whatever. I got to get you to run some of the Gen Con this year, it appears. It appears to be, that's what now the new thing. I, Mike doesn't like to do it. I got him to do it one year, and as much as he hates it, I think he had fun. Yeah. I know his players had fun because I legitimately got uh, cards where oh. he got rated. Yeah. And all my GMs, when I run it, you, you get a rating. There's an anonymous thing. They turn them in. And he did great. So I need to get him back. I need you run something. Uh, Nick, our buddy Nick and Lauren, who haven't been on this show, but are on the other show that me and Mike do, they all run stuff. It's a great time. If you want to be, uh, if you want to see change, you have to be the instrument of change. And you got to be willing to take a bad game because as I have played far more bad games on that side of the table than I played good games. Mm -hmm. Very bad experiences. Um, and I just, I want it to be better and I know I can. So that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. So would you, would you be interested in signing up to run a game at Gen Con? Maybe. Maybe? Yeah, that's, that's okay. a lot of, I feel like that's a lot of, Stress, pressure? like pressure, stress? yeah, like oh, yeah. like, like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. That's perfect. <laughs> I'm excited. It's got me, uh, it's got my juices rolling now. So that's where. We're, all right. So, uh, any, anything you want to add to, to? I mean, like you've said already, not everything is for everyone, you know. And I think we all need to recognize that. Um, I, I don't see a problem with saying you have to have a separation in age. Um, but make it an option. That's all I'm going to no. say. Because I think, I think that the thing would be, you have to do this. No, I don't. And now I've just started a convention that's 18 and older. Yeah. I don't think that's gatekeeping. You forced me into this. Mm. See, again, I'm willing to run for all these things. Mm -hmm. I've put out there a list of games and what they're going to be at. And the truth is, I don't think there's that many 18 plus games on the docket. You know, um, usually those end up in some weird room. I ran, um, for a local smaller con, I ran a World War II game that was going to be bloody. Mm -hmm. It was going to be uh, pretty rough. And I put in there 18 plus. Well, I ended up in a room that I was uncomfortable being mm. in because it was some really weird games going mm -hmm. on in that room when mine was, I hate to say it, it was, it was just violence. It was going to be an, uh, just a Quentin Tarantino version of violence. Mm -hmm. Over the top, gratuitous, it was going to be bloody. Um, and I didn't want to put a 16 year older through that or whatever, because I don't know. Maybe that 16 year older is sensitive. So, yeah, I, yeah. Get on with it, people. There's got to be something for everybody. Yeah. Over on Kickstarter, I uh, looked at something real quick called Quick Play Adventure Games. It uh, is a very small, compact. Um, chit based game hmm. kind of situation you could use miniatures if you wanted to but they've got pop out tokens um that sort of thing and they had a pulp pi adventure hmm. that had three interconnected stories to make up their thing hmm. but it looked like a very simple very easy six-sider based uh adventure chit token game hmm. where you played some stuff got clues mm -hmm. and then they had four or five different there's a sci-fi game there's a World War II game called Nuts um, and two or three other games that they might unlock. $15 PDF, $25 physical copy or and PDF combined. And you get, I would recommend if you're going to do a chit-based token game that you buy the physical. Otherwise, you have to cut out all these tokens and yeah. chits and all that. And that just sounds like a, a giant thing. So mm -hmm. um, quick play adventure games. I think it's got 16 days left as of September 30th. Um, like 70 color cardstock counters, quick, easy rules. I watched like a three minute easy playthrough on it uh, this morning and it looked really simple. Okay. So if you're looking for just a really easy, uh, and it looked also like it was a solitaire game. Okay. So if you're that kind of person that your best friend is yourself and you have nobody to play a game with or you're stuck in the wilds of uh, 
I don't know, Alaska and are snowed in and this is all you can do. Then, Who would ever go so, to Alaska? Uh, all the cool people. So, all right, what else you got? Um, you know, really don't have too much aside from just this warning. Warning. Warning to everybody. Don't do a deck of many things. <laughs> I know we've already said it. Don't do it. Good. I'm serious. Great way to end a campaign. It is a, it's a great way to end a campaign. You're right. Or just introduce so much chaos that you have no idea yeah. what to do. The deck of many things for me is a great GM tool to decide how you want to be as a GM. Because mm -hmm. here's the way it's going to work. It's either if they all go, we're going to, is it four? Is that, is there a max? I thought four was a max. I thought so too. But then again, as, as she was explaining to me some stuff, there's been so many additions. I don't know if the additions have changed. I thought you had, you had up to four picks. And well, you had to pick that. Cool. Like, you couldn't do two, I'm done. Right. I'm good. You said four, you got to take four. Right. But I also thought you only got one shot at it. Well, and, and, she, and one of her players took two shots. They yeah. said three, picked their three, liked everything they got, and then said, I'll take three more. And I'm like, I kind And of I might always... not have done that right. I, yeah. And it might have just been me as a GM that it was a house rule. Like, what you say is what you get, but that's it. Um, but... The, the thing that I think about as a GM with this deck of many things is it tests your, it tests your GM resolve. Mm -hmm. Are you going to nerf this so that it's going to work out? Because the truth is, is 50% of that deck is, bad. is good and is going to help a player, give them a level, give them castle, gold, all kinds of other nonsense. Yeah. It's gambling. Mm -hmm. you, you won, you pulled the one good card, you're set. Yeah. Or you got Ubalet or whatever it was and now you're stuck. Now... Some of those, I believe, you can get out of. Absolutely. But others, I'm just like, if you're first level and your buddy is trapped in another dimension, one, you're a GM that gave a first level party this year, stupid. Uh, but Well, they're not first level, gotcha. so I'm not stupid. You're not stupid. You're a genius. Yeah, um, so smart. You can go to Cracker Barrel and put all the pegs in the right I, order. Probably. Absolutely. So, But yeah, uh, yeah, I think it really tests the GM's resolve. Are you going to nerf it because they made bad choices? You don't want this to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm like, people need to know when you do this, well, it's a 50% chance, flip a coin, whether it's going to be good or bad. I do think that's interesting because as a GM, I actually had more fun than I've had in a while because it introduced such a random chaotic element for me. My players get that every, every session to some degree. Like, they don't know what's coming. They know what they want to go and do but they don't know what I've lined up for them. So for me, it was a little bit like being a player again, where like I so just have surprised no all the idea. Uh, I mean, they surprised me. I think says something about your players. I don't know. Like I, I know essentially like what they want to do. They, they want. I can tell you that that GM behind that thing right now, he has no clue what's going to happen at most of the games that me and you show up to. That's true. He's got an outline. He knows where he wants it to go. And then we. But then at some point, he's just like throw it away. All right, what's he doing? They're going to talk to the shark. You know, it's just a shark, right? It's not a shark person. Yeah, oh, I know, but he's such a good shark, and sharks love me. So now I'm going to try to charm the shark. Wait, what? Yeah, sharks can be charmed. Absolutely. I got some chum. It's some delicious chum. It's the best chum. No, no. My, and now all of a sudden, I've got a shark pet. My players, they don't care about the shark. <laughs> they don't care about the shark. They He's don't got care. another group that does not care about that shark. I can guarantee you. Yeah. They're having shark fin soup. Yeah. Whereas our group, no, he knows. Like, I... Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you said, some of these bad cards, you can get out of them sure. or there's a way to fix it or just deal with it um so we did run into one of those situations but i think which card was that um and can you talk about it i can't okay so yeah, it's still I ongoing i can't remember exactly like, yeah and again i don't know if the deck has changed it used to be like death shows up and you have to fight yes that's like one card spectre of thankfully death. i mean again if you're first level you're probably not winning that fight but if you're 20th level when you pull it there's a good chance maybe you walk away from this fight. Thankfully, um, they did not pull that card. They they might have pulled that card, but they they didn't know exactly how the deck worked when they first found it. So, you know, that was the first card they physically drew out of the deck, but nobody said, I'm drawing one card, you know. So they pull this card out and nothing happens because they didn't announce what they uh, okay. were drawing. Ooh, they got lucky. They did get lucky. Got lucky. They got really lucky, but oh, then, cool. I mean, they got unlucky a little bit later down the Sounds line. Sounds like they got very unlucky. Yeah. Sounds like you took two players out of the game. Out of how many in your group? Three. 
three players in your group and two of them now in my head. So yeah, I'd say that deck did its job. They've created <laughs> temporary characters. I think one of them is going to end up being a permanent character. Um, wow. So yeah, it's. Did they uh, watch this? I don't think so. Hi, sorry about character. They know. They know what's okay. up. They know what's up. But it, I don't know. It was uh, it, it added that chaotic element that made it really fun for me, and I was able to kind of take what I did have planned that they did not get to because of all of this, and work in some of those elements with what happened. Excellent. Yeah, so I enjoyed it, even though it was awful and horrible and you should never do it, ever. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do that. Avoid the deck of many things yeah. again, unless unless it's time to end. Yeah. If it's time to end, then you know I think oh great, this is a, this is one way to do it. Yeah. You but, know. Yeah. If you're in the middle of like your big thing, yeah. your fourth or fifth level, and you're about ready to, and you're and since so you're about to face the big bad, they were like right about to face the big bad. So in my mind, they were going to get this you know chest of goodies including health potions and whatever else there was some gold in there and there you know one of my players sounds like an been, rpg uh, this sounds like a video game yes, rpg exactly. element You're like, yeah big boss is coming up yeah it's weird this last room we just found like all this stuff all these health around. potions I, you know i think my group of players we've always had this tendency to get goodies at the end of the fight okay. but you're about to go in and face this like high level thing that you've never faced before so i thought yeah i'll give it to them now and then they could choose to use the deck in the fight if they wanted and that would add the chaos um i still would not have been prepared i, I this is my first encounter with a deck of many things and i i don't think i ever would have been prepared and i shouldn't have done it <laughs> now you've learned i now at least I've like learned. the fact that you used a deck of cards yeah. If you're going to use a deck of many things, you need to go to that level yeah. to produce a card deck of some sort, mm -hmm. preferably a tarot deck or something that's mm -hmm. got some cool looking suits. Mm -hmm. But if you're just rolling dice or random like that, you know, I, I think that that's one of those deals where it just it has to go to that little yeah. extra level. The tarot deck, I had like a a partial deck, so I'm not actively using it for anything. Um, I took that and associated each tarot card with you know, a card from the deck of many things. And it worked out really well because some of them seemed very natural um, for those yeah. those different representations. And it did make it more fun for them. And they could kind of tell when they drew cards. They're this like, oh. This card looks scary. That's not a good card. <laughs> Speaking of that, if someone wants to do a, a tarot reading or get a tarot reading, Absolutely. you got an event coming up. Yes. Sun King is hosting a an oddities market on October 15th. It's I, it, Go to their Facebook page. They have the times on there. Um, but it's a good chunk of the day. I will be reading tarot. Um, the readings are free, um, but if you would like to make a Goodwill donation, I will be accepting those, and that is going to go to the Friends of the Library to support um, the initiatives that they support. So the Friends of the Library helps promote um, library programming and, and things of that nature. So uh, come out, enjoy the Oddities Market. They're, they're going to have a ton of great vendors. I'm really excited about it, and I'm excited to get to read for people, especially for free. I think. You know, sometimes that's a little bit of a barrier. Like if you want a reading, you've maybe never had a reading, um, you know, you don't have to pay anything to get it. And not that there's anything wrong with charging because, I mean, you are providing that service. But Sure. Sun King is a uh, brewery located in downtown Kokomo. It's a great uh, area where they have a wide selection of craft beers on tap. You get to uh, experience it. They don't serve food. What they do here is they have all of the takeout menus from like all the restaurants in Kokomo, you have the food delivered or you bring it with you to their mm -hmm. establishment, mm -hmm. you buy their beverage, mm -hmm. and then the place is set up, it's really a great feeling in there. There's you know, there's bar set up, there's table set up, there's lounge chairs set up, mm -hmm. there's a there's an eclectic mix of families are areas. welcome, children, dog, dogs, dogs, pets yeah. I've seen. Mm -hmm. So um, so, and they do a lot of these community events like that. They've done trivia events. Mm -hmm. They've done oddity events. I have run an RPG um, in the in the Sun King for a group and had a great time. Um, not the first time I've run a game in a bar, by the way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, so definitely work that out. We've also got an event. Unfortunately, we just have the bare details, but the Kokomo Howard County Public Library 
is uh, doing different things with role playing game. They're going to have a terrain uh, creation seminar coming up where I think you'll be able to get a free piece of 3D printed terrain and we will paint it or put it together on site and then you'll walk away. So it's a paint and take for a piece of terrain That's of some awesome, sort. Yeah. We'll have more details on that as it's fleshed out because I'm sure it's going to be very limited mm. terrain. You know, that's uh, we're, it's free, so we can only do so much of that. Yeah. Uh, but if you get, show up for the tarot reading, give a free will donation, yeah. that's the sort of thing that helps offset these other events that yes. go hand in hand and help us build a uh, community of role players, mm -hmm. tabletop gamers, mm -hmm. other things in this area. Mm -hmm. So. Very cool. All right, so what we are going to be doing uh, coming up is me and Kaylee here are, this is your first miniature role-playing game. Mm -hmm. We are gonna be taking on a game called Space Station Zero, which is a tabletop mini game. You will have to create and paint a group of characters. We have got boxes of people to choose from, to make up a crew. And in Space Station Zero, the idea is quite simple. You have hit light speed. You've hit your bubble wormhole technology. You've hit whatever it is that allows you faster than light travel to get to places quickly without aging to death on your way to Alpha Centauri. That's what you hit. And something went wrong. Mm. But instead of exploding into a million bits and atoms, you ended up at a mysterious place called Space Station Zero. There are no stars within sight. This is the only thing. And as you come out of whatever your travel thing is, you get a, uh, a calm saying, welcome to Space Station Zero. You arrive there to find over the years, other people have arrived at Space Station Zero. There is a thriving community on this giant space station, but the way it's been calculated by the best, uh, the best intellects there is it would take a hundred lifetimes of the longest lived race here to get back to normal space. So you are effectively trapped on Space Station Zero. So you can either live in this little compound area that they have set up and drink away synthanol until you die. I'm done, I'm in, that's it. Or you and your crew can go out into the Space Station and start exploring the mysteries of Space Station okay, Zero, all right, fine. seeing what's out there. The game itself is what we call a miniatures agnostic game, which means you can take the minis from any company and use them. Mm. So they don't make miniatures specifically for this game. If you've got Games Workshop miniatures that are Space Marines, you can play them. If you've got other side, doesn't matter, any science fiction related miniatures, obviously this is a sci-fi game. So using D&D miniatures, if you use Starfinder miniatures, probably would work fine. You put together a group. Now you get three different uh, versions of a group. You can take a group of like eight characters, I would describe that as eight first level characters. You can take a group of six characters, that would be like six third level characters. Mm -hmm. Or you can take a group of four characters, and that would be like taking a group of four fifth level characters. Okay. That is your option. Do you want numbers, or do you want skills? Mm -hmm. And so, you'll pick a type of vessel that you are going to uh, have your crew be from. And depending on what type of vessel you choose, that will tell you what kind of crew that you are going to have. So if you want a combat heavy crew, then you can, uh, you can choose like a warship. So there's a medical vessel, there's a science vessel, there's a war vessel, there's a shipping ship, there's a pirate ship, and there's an exploration ship. Hmm. Depending on which of those you decide to run, we'll tell you how you're gonna build your crew, okay. what kind of crew members are gonna be on it. So obviously, a pirate ship is going to give you an eclectic mix, whereas a warship is going to give you guys mostly focused on killing, maiming, and destroying. Mm -hmm. The game itself will work almost like a choose your own adventure. Mm -hmm. So you'll start off with, everybody will start off pretty much with the first adventure all the same. Mm. After that, you will randomly roll what the next adventure is going to be. Okay. So what I'm hoping that we are going to do is we will sit down and discuss the first adventure on the thing. We'll discuss which ship mm -hmm. we're going to take, the style, and then we'll work on building our you know dudes and painting them and all that. Yeah. And then we'll each play that scenario. Okay. And then from there, uh, we will you know 
start going and exploring Space Station mm -hmm. Zero. And Zero goes, and hopefully we'll have some guests join us, some friends join in. Um, doesn't matter level of play. This is a very simplistic game. So uh, it's more about the storytelling element. It is set up to be a, a solitaire game. So it will be a situation where you'll play the game, I will play the game, we'll mm. play it separately but with each other. Okay. But uh, that way, you know, for your first game or two before you, you know, yeah. I can you know, give you some tips and whatnot yeah, on, yeah. on what to do. And, you know, oh, hey, uh, your guy's dead. I'm sorry to hear that. He got whacked. Did I... Say goodbye. You say you, you say goodbye in the aftermath because there's an aftermath portion where you oh. find out if your guy gets knocked out of the game, he might be dead. Hmm. But there's a chance it was just a flesh wound. Interesting. Or he might miss just a session. He's just out so, there in space, yeah. just like floating around. Exactly. Well, he's probably in the space station. Okay. Um, and then as you go, the crew will level, mm -hmm. and so it's it's got a role playing element to it. It's a miniature game. It's got a choose your own adventure thing. Um, so I think it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. We'll get. Uh, We'll get going on that. Hey, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us here at the Geek Street Game Table. Geek Storm Game Table. That's what I did last time. Well, thanks for checking out on the Geek Street. Geek Storm Game Table. On, yeah, perfect. Yeah, you, you yeah, yeah. Take yeah. care of it. Take yeah. the outro. Go for it. Um, we'll see you next time. Big groovy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>